All righty, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for taking some time out of your schedules to join us here for our rental tools workshop. Uh, we're gonna get started in just a moment. I just wanna make sure everyone can get in here. We're admitting some people in still from the waiting room, but thank you for joining us. We have some great information we can't wait to share with you all today. All right, we'll probably give it just one more minute, guys, as we're waiting for people to join from the waiting room, and then we will get started with the presentation here for you. All righty, I am going to go ahead and get started and we'll admit people as they come. But good afternoon or good morning. Thank you everyone for attending. Um, it is our pleasure to have you here. I know your schedules are jam packed. So we will try and keep this brief for you um, and cover what we're looking for um, in this webinar. And hopefully you'll take some great things away on how to better utilize the rental tools that we have available for you in apartments.com. All right. Uh, my name is Corey McCain. I am a trainer here with our apartments.com uh, slash co-star office here. I've been with co-star about six years now, uh, probably seven in March, actually. Prior to coming to co-star, I spent most of my time in residential property management. So I have been through the same things all of you have kind of been through with collecting of rent, leasing, um, bed bugs, exterminations, you name it, I've been there for it. Um, so I, I definitely empathize with where you guys are coming from, and these are going to be some of the greatest things we can do to help you out here. Um, a little about apartments.com, though. Um, we are certainly here to help advertise, bring owners, bring renters together here on our platform. Um, another thing that we're very proud of now, though, is our rentals tools and offering this package to help you all navigate and get the best experience and income from your properties. So that's what we're gonna kind of cover today here, a bit of it. A few ground keeping rules and everything I wanna go over first though. Uh, this session will be recorded, okay? So this will be recorded for a latter use if you want to. I just want to let everyone know that. Um, also, we have let everyone enter on mute at this moment. Uh, what we will do is we will go through the presentation and give you a walkthrough of all the material at the end of that though, we will do a question and an answer session. Uh, we have Jocelyn on standby for that. She's one of our amazing customer service um, support people here at apartments.com and CoStar. So she's answered a ton of the questions you guys might have. 
Um, so hopefully I can go through this. There won't be too many left, but I'm sure there will as, you know, unique situations come up and we can kind of mediate some of those for you for it, okay? Um, with those questions you have, if you have them while you're coming, please leave them in the Zoom chat feature for us. That way we'll have a list of everything that we can go through for you. And hopefully um, we can cover them for you and there won't be too many duplicates. But if I'm going in here, allow me to share with you our agenda um, introductions. We've kind of come through this for you. Um, we do want to give you a residence overview because we're making several assumptions on the call. We're going to walk through how to create a lease and you can see how to sign lease from the landlord perspective and from the renter's perspective. The other thing we're going to do is looking at setting up payments and how you can collect rent on these properties as well and kind of what your renters will see as well when we look at what's going through there. We'll also give you some available resources you can contact outside of this. And like I said, finally, we'll go through that Q&A portion for you guys. But first things first, I want to look at the residence overview here for it, okay? Now, when I say residence overview, um, that is part of like one of the management softwares we have here for, for you, okay? It's where you manage your residence at. So like I had mentioned before, I'm making several assumptions in this walkthrough already. Um, one of those being that you have an account here with apartments.com with us, okay? Um, another one being that you've added a property into our system already, okay? So everything I'm looking at and doing here is that the property has already been added to our system. You've gone through and verified that um, with our customer support team and that is already in the system through our verifications. The other assumption I am also going to make is that you have already found the person you're looking to live into your home. So whether that was through um, marketing on apartments.com, um, opening up our rental tools and activating the applications for your property, or if you vetted them through apartments.com or even outside, which is fine but we are going to assume that you've gone through those processes and you have those residents available, okay? You need to have those available in order to begin to create leases and create payments. Um, if you need any help on those, we do have previously recorded webinars on how to add a property to a system along with how to set up applications, um, accept applications, process, um, credit histories and rental histories and criminal histories, all that as well. So we do have those available and we'll be storing those along with this recording as well. But we are making the assumptions you've added your properties and added your people. The next easiest step then is, like I'm saying, navigate to the residence section. If you ever really get lost in any of our processes, this residence section here is a great hub for you to start with to begin to fix it and find that solution, okay? So you're just starting here by saying set up residence. This screenshot here is just a picture of what a landlord would see in that resident portal here for it, okay? And it's as simply as clicking the set up residence button at the top or in the middle of the screen there for it. All right. When you're in that portal, you're just adding and removing any information that you have for your residents, guys. So you do need a little bit of information for from them if you um, have gone through us as far as loading the applications and screening your application through apartments.com. This information is very easy to find. If you already have outside renters you found, which is totally fine as well, then you're going to have to do this a little bit more manually. OK, but this will come over here for you. So you're adding that in, you can edit people, you can remove people. It's all a matter of who you're looking for to have in the system as lease coming from you, okay? Prior to creating that lease, you just wanna show here the lease term that you're looking for, whether it's fixed dates or month to month, you've got the options to do both there for it, okay? So you can do short terms, month to month, full year, two year, whichever one that works for you. Once you've got that done, as far as adding your resident information in, you're just going to click finish for me. Once you click finish, it should look similar to this to your page. You've done everything. 
as you can see now, the lease term has been added in, but you can still change that date, go month to month, cancel the entire thing before creating it. Entirely up to you, okay? But you wanna make sure you go through this residence portion first. That's gonna be your first step. Once you're here though, as you can see, you can create a new lease, you can upload documents and set up online payments. We'll cover all that today here with you guys though. But if you wanted to start off, which I think is important, is uh, creating that new lease. Um, when you're creating a new lease, one thing I want to point out to you guys is we have a team of lawyers that have made these um, legally specific to your zip code, all right? So they vetted all of our leases when you're creating them. Um, they know what the certain laws and rules and regulations are in that area. So I want you guys to feel comfortable in that. Um, this is not just a generic lease that would one size fits all. It's really customizable to your jurisdiction and the rules of that jurisdiction, okay? What I also want to ensure you is that you've got plenty of places to put as much detail as you want into your lease. Um, any kind of nuances you like that are special to your area jurisdiction, we'll have them in here as well, okay? So feel confident, we've done a lot of work, we've put a lot of investments, you can feel safe in your leases. All right, so when you're creating your leases, um, you're in your writing section, this is gonna ask you where to start at, you're just gonna hit begin. If I can draw your attention, it'll show you review jurisdiction laws for Atlanta, Georgia. So like I said, these are customized to the jurisdiction you're in. So feel free to hit that drop down at any time to go over any rules and regulations that you see there. All right, once you hit begin, like I said, it is gonna be like a 17 step process, but it can be as detailed as you're looking to make it here for it, okay? Um, you can do this lease as an individual or as a company, both are fine there for it. So you've got that option to begin with when you're first starting. Um, you are gonna need, of course, name, email address to continue forward with it. Once you hit continue, um, what it's gonna do is asking for like any of the residents or guarantors. Um, they're gonna include things that you have already, but you've got an opportunity here. Let's say if there's an occupant that comes along later that you wanna add in and put in here for the lease, you've got that option to do that here before you actually execute the lease and add that information in. Or later on down the road, you decide it needs to be a guarantor. You can add in these people as they come without having to do that upfront there for it, okay? And you just hitting continue once you're done with that. Um, ownership, whether it's an individual or a business entity, uh, really important when we're talking about like tax documentation though. So just be um, sure which one you really wanna go with here uh, when you're setting up this lease here and what name or whose name it's going to be in. Once you did that one, you're just hitting continue. Uh, property management. Um, let me take a step back here for it, okay? Any individual owners we have here that are managing your own properties, that is totally fine. You can manage it as an owner, okay? We do have the option here where a property management company can manage this for you. They can also come in and create this lease for you. So if you've hired a property manager to look over your properties, they too can put their listing here on apartments.com. They can vet their um, renters and things for you and they can build this lease out for you and still have you sign this lease if your property management company is going over this. So don't feel like you're trapped into it where you have to do everything yourself. We've made this easy as well if you want a third party to assist you with the management of the property. Moving forward, you just need to hit continue and I'll move you to the next one. Uh, same thing if you are represented by a real estate agent um, or agent of service process, uh, that is specific to certain jurisdictions. So you'll know best if that equates to you. And we're just hitting continue. It's really, really fluid like this. You're just hitting continue once you're done. Um, security deposits. Uh, I wanna take a step back here as well and just give you guys a pause. We are showing where if you want to select a security deposit or not, that's totally fine. If you've taken a security deposit offline before, like they've already given you their certified funds, that's fine as well. You can show in this lease document where they've given that to you, all right? 
Um, a brief note, some jurisdictions are going to require you to keep the security deposit in a separate account than what you are collecting the rents from. And we do have it set up where you can say where you're housing that security deposit. So I'll probably bring that note back up to you guys as well there for, for you, okay? But yes, you can take security deposits, display those and your lease and show what the other account is you're keeping them into. Once you're done there, we're just hitting continue. And now we're going on to monthly rent here for it, okay? So I do wanna say this is for reoccurring monthly rent and monthly charges, all right? Um, we're gonna cover payments a little bit later, uh, but this is where you show in your lease what those monthly charges are. I wanna assure you, you also have the ability to do one-time charges later on in payments. So you can do one-off charges, one-off expenses, but here's where you're gonna do your monthly reoccurring payments um, from your renters, all right? Um, but you'll set like what the amount is. Um, if you'll be doing a prorated rent, you can show that as well. If there's a late fee, if there's a grace period, um, if we're doing percentages, if we're doing dollars, if we're doing insufficient funds, so you can set up all those recurring features. And again, outside of these, you can even set up one-off payments that you need to for a number of things. But here's where you're gonna show those rental payments in your lease there for it, guys. And once you're done, like I said, we're hitting continue. Uh, pets, which are always a stickler for a lot of people. Um, I've definitely seen pets generate tons of income for properties. I have also seen the damage pets can cause to your property. So let us know whether you allow them, um, if you're what type of pets you're allowing. You can do weight limits, breed restrictions, um, even like to freehand these. So please, this is a fully customizable portion of this lease when you're talking about what kind of pets you're looking to accept um, and what your rules and regulations are around pets. But they're gonna ask you a few more questions regarding those, like are we doing a pet fee, okay? Is there a one-time fee amount? Is there going to be a pet deposit? Will we be charging monthly rent around it? We've got a full pet section here for, for you, even if you want to charge a fee for a violation of those. All right. But once you're done, we're just hitting continue again. Um, we've got a section for parking. Again, a customizable piece if you want a monthly parking fee or if there's parking instructions. Here, like here's your parking space in this area. Please don't park by here, block dumpsters fully customizable for you um, at your property. Once you're done, guys, same thing. We're just going to continue to move forward. Additional fees, laundry fees, hold on fees. You can add all these in here for it, okay? So when we're looking at other fees that are optional, here you can add one-time or recurring fees, okay? So you've got a lot of leeway here when we're talking about customizing the payment section and what your tenants or renters are gonna log on and say that they're happy with paying for it, okay? Um, we're just gonna continue to move forward and we're showing we have online rent through apartments.com, which I do promote for everybody. It's an amazing tool that we're gonna go over as well, where you can collect rent right through apartments.com, but personal checks, cashier's checks, direct deposit, whatever you want. And you can customize your instructions on how you wanna receive that. But right here in your lease is where you can show where your acceptable forms of payment are. If we're coming through utility information, there is no freehand section here, but if you are not going to cover any of the uh, utilities, please just select none. Moving forward, our rating furnishings and the appliances that will be supplied. If we're looking at property disclosures, um, if it was built before 1978, there needs to be a lead-based paint disclosure. And we'll even generate that if that your property is before 1978, we'll generate that lead paint disclosure and it will come along with your lease. And just some additional questions around renters insurance, um, satellite dishes, smoking, a huge thing now is having full non-smoking properties. Um, would you be submitting like a list of regulations for your renter? And that's fine there. And then we're just hitting continue to move forward. Now here, the special instructions, fully optional. But here is where you can really customize things, okay? You have a freehand section for all rules if it hasn't been addressed in this created lease function for you. Um, 
Amazing thing you can also do is if you already have addendums built out, already have rules in like a PDF form, you can just upload that file right here and it'll show and display for you. So we have gone through, like I said, a lot of investment to make sure our lawyers and legal team have looked through these and made sure that this create a lease function is legal for the jurisdictions, okay? Now, I would all say that you guys would probably do want to do the same due diligence when adding any of the, um, uploading any additional rules, regulations, PDFs, and that, because we are not going to vet those for you, okay? But anything through our create a lease function has been vetted for you. Once you hit continue there, guys, you're really almost done. You're at step 17 there for it, okay? So what you can do here is you can download the lease for your review. After you download it, of course, then you can print it out if you'd like to, um, but please review it. Once you're good to go there, you're gonna confirm and send it to your renters. Once you do that, you're all done. Your piece is gone. And the best thing is this is free of charge. This doesn't cost you guys anything to use this tool here for it. So none of that you have to worry about, okay? But once you're done, if you hit return to that residence details page, like I said before, that residence page, that's like your central hub that you're looking at for it, okay? You'll see that it's done. You can view things and set up new people, all right? Now, I'm going to go over this quickly just because I it's signing a lease as a renter. I do want you guys to be able to walk your, you know, renters and clients through any questions they may have about what they should look like. Um, but they will get an email once you have said send this lease to the renters. OK, um, once it's there, if they're also logged into their account, they'll need an account with apartments.com. They can see it there as well. All they have to do is view residence dashboard. And what that's going to do is just take them over here. Um, into their apartments.com account. And they can see that they have a lease pending. They can view details. Um, once they're done, they too can set up their online payments. So once they view the details, they will show what their lease term is, property manager, they can see the residence function here. Um, then the last step, once they review that initial information, is just signing the lease, okay? Now they have the option to cancel lease, go to dashboard, of course, but like if they're going to begin to sign their lease, they click there, it goes to DocuSign right in their window um, where they can sign these leases. Uh, once it comes up, they can hit continue. That is gonna show them where to sign and date at the bottom. Now this is going to go to any leaseholder that's in that apartment, okay? So whether you've got one leaseholder, two, three, four, they're all gonna get that email to go and execute this lease. And it will not be completed until each active leaseholder has gone through this DocuSign um, stage and signed off on the lease here for it. Now, back to like the owner's view and I'm sure what you guys are really excited about is how to cash in and accept these payments here, okay? So setting up payments is really simple here, guys. Um, it's gonna start, like I said, from that same place, that same residence portal, okay? So like I said, if you get stuck looking for something, start at that residence portal for me, okay? You'll see a button here where it just says set up payments here for it. All right. It's going to look really close to how it would look when we were setting up that lease there for it. Okay. So it's not going to look too different. It's going to show your monthly due date, um, when the recurring rent starts, if there's any additional fees. You can still even add more fees at this stage if you were looking to. All right. Um, you can also prorate the rent. It'll calculate that for you as well. You're just going to hit continue and it'll bring you here. Now, all that we need, guys, is an account for these payments to come to for you. And again, this is no charge to you at all. So if you'd like to, you can use your account and routing numbers or we actually utilize Stripe here and you can select which bank account that you have at one of these um, leading banks. And you can log in. When you're logging in, you're just using your online ID and password, and it'll bring up the account that you have set up here with us for it. Okay. So that's all you're doing. You're just setting up an account for the money to come to. Okay. Once that comes in, you are good to go. All right. Um, once you've set this up, just confirm and invite, and your people can come in. Uh, what I want to say again, though, when we're talking about accounts at this account setting up stage, there, like I mentioned, in certain jurisdictions, 
you have to have that security deposit held in a separate account than the one you're taking rent from. Here's where you could set up that account and then you can see where those banks are, okay? But once you hit confirm an invite, it's just gonna send that off to um, your residents and invite them in here for it, okay? Um, but all they're gonna do is, um, what you got to do is hit the view payments and it'll take you here. Now here, let us know if it's an individual or a business again, just so we kind of know again for tax purposes, what you're looking for. Um, it'll have this last four of your social and you're just verifying your entity. It's a verification step essentially before money is being put into your account. All right. Um, and same thing, I'll walk through this um, fairly quickly just so you can give your renters kind of an idea about what they should be looking at when they're setting up accounts. So they get an email, like I said, just like they got an email to notify them, hey, your lease is ready. They're going to get this email notifying them, hey, set up your payments here with us. All they have to do is click this link, or like I said, if they are logged into their apartments.com account, they'll see this as well. All right. It pays with their payment section. Let's know, hey, let's get started here. So they have the option to do several different things. They can set up a monthly auto pay. They can do one-time payments. Um, they can show different payments. What I want to let you guys know here is this, though. And we get this question a lot around like late fees and other fees that are added on, OK? Um, when someone has like a monthly automatic payment set up, it's only going to take the amount that's shown for the automatic payment. So if there's a late fee that needs to be charged or um, some sort of thing that's been added on for a one-time payment, then um, it will show like in their records they owe this money but it will not be deducted automatically from their account. Only the amount they have for the monthly auto pay will be deducted for them. So they'll have to go in and make a one-time payment to cover the remainder of that charge or for it. So that's one thing I do wanna clear up just to make sure um, you can let them know, okay? Um, that, hey, it'll show on their ledger like what's going on, how that happens, but it won't take it if they have monthly auto pay on. Another thing you they are available to do, if you have a roommate situation, they can each roommate can set up a different account. So it all doesn't fall on one account. They can have multiple accounts they can pay things from. Um, we don't set how much that comes from it. That is still going to be on the renters, though, how they're going to pay that. So it doesn't automatically revert to half if you've got two leaseholders on there and they're setting up two payments. They'll dictate what funds kind of come from that. Okay. Um, but all they're doing at the bottom, once they have it in, they're hitting continue and they're moving forward. Okay. So the same step you guys kind of came in when we're talking about setting up payments and how they want to pay, they're going to set up here as well. So you're going to see the transaction fee for them, depending on how they do it. There is no transaction fee from a checking account. There is a small one for debit or credit though. Okay. It never costs you guys anything to collect rent. There's no fees or funds that have to come from your landlord. Depending on how your residents pay, there may be additional fees. But they can go through the same Stripe verification you guys went through um, to set up for their checking accounts, or they can use their account and routing numbers, all the same. But still, you guys do not have to use this. I would totally advertise for it and implore you to use this feature. It is fantastic, but totally up to you. All right. And pretty much once they're done, it'll come down here. Let them know that they can schedule the payments here with us for it. OK, um, they can edit it later on if they need to change different accounts. That's available for them to do later on. Once you hit schedule payments, they are good to go, guys. OK, so it's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward process through all this for it. OK. Um, so I just want you guys to feel good about that. Understand we have these resources. Again, these are totally free for you. We're not charging for the lease creation. We're not charging for creating payments, nothing like that, all right? And I also do realize we kind of started in the middle. Um, as I mentioned, I made several assumptions when we began around there's a property already that has been entered, um, that you've already vetted people, have residents that you want to go with. It's fine. So we have those, like I said, recordings still available, but I also want to bring your attention to other resources that we have available for you if you get stuck anywhere in this process, okay? Um, our help center is fantastic. 
there's tons of articles that they've gone through. Um, they've shown plenty of different ways and workarounds and best practices that you can utilize. Uh, if you're looking to reach customer service directly, our customer service is available there, support at apartments.com. Um, and like I said, that rental manager website is right there as well. So we've got lots of research uh, resources there for you guys, okay? That we wanna make sure you're available for you. Like I said, we'll have these recordings as well. But what I do wanna make sure we get into and have time for is our Q&A session, okay? So hopefully you guys have had a chance to um, leave some questions in the chat. I see a couple are coming down here for us now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. I'm going to pass it over to Jocelyn. Uh, and she, I'm going to ask her any of the questions that we have in the chat to make sure that um, we can answer those as quickly as possible for you. So Jocelyn, good to see you. Let me invite you all to do, do, let me see. All right. I have now changed the feature where you guys are allowed to unmute yourselves. Okay. So if there is a follow up question that you might have, if we haven't answered your question in the chat to the best of our ability, please let us know and follow up here with us there for it. Okay. But first things first here, guys, um, let me pull up our chat feature. Are you just making sure that you can hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. And introduce yourself, Jocelyn, to everyone. Hello, everybody. My name is Jocelyn. Um, I've been with our uh, Farmers.com customer support team for about three years now. All right. And the first question I see up here, uh, Jocelyn, if you could address. Um, any of the concerns or major drawbacks you've seen from people like using the service? Um, using this, well, most of the, the main concerns I would uh, recommend, or I'm sorry, the more common concerns um, would be probably finding everything within the site. Um, there's filters, so that's something to always look out for. Um, if you're unable to find a lease that you just created, make sure to go to your filters and um, if it's for an upcoming date, you can go, uh, you can change the filter to upcoming from current. Um, it's a pretty broad question though. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. But yeah, I think um, the help center is a great place. Um, if you run into anywhere, as far as like the most frequently asked questions and concerns, we have that right there as well. Yes, definitely. And I do want to mention if you have any specific questions in regards to your specific account, anything that you are experiencing um, for your account, I would definitely uh, recommend emailing us directly. Uh, this would be more so for general questions about that setup. Okay. Um, I see our next one here is, uh, what alternative web access is available if let's say Google or Explorer decides to limit or delete internet service? Um, I would maybe recommend switching to the mobile, um, your mobile app. We have a mobile app. Um, it will direct you to a mobile browser. Um, I'm not too sure um, of that question though. Um, I'm not sure how it would delete your internet service. Okay. Well, yeah, we do have the mobile app available for everyone as well. Um, the next one I kind of see down is, is recurring the only payment option for tenants? No. So um, if they don't want to do reoccurring payments, they can log in monthly and just schedule a payment every month. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, are sample leases available for review prior to signing up with apartments.com? Yes, definitely. They are available. Um, they're actually available in our help center, but they're also available right before, um, well, prior to signing up, yes, um, that's in our help center. Let me go ahead and get that pulled up. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, are you able to see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Great. This is my the help center right here. This is a great tool. Um, as you can see right here, you can type in specific um, questions or specific uh, answers that you're looking for. And then if you scroll down, we actually have it um, split into, you know, general questions about advertising, questions about the rental tools. And then um, we also have the option for uh, premium. So that's all, that's all split up there on our, in our help center. Um, I do have the article already here pulled up right here in our help center. This is the name of the article. How do I create a lease through apartments.com? And in this article, we have a video going uh, step by step how to create a lease, but here you can also download um, a sample lease so you can see what that will look like prior to using that. 
the lease creation. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Um, our next one here is, are we able to upload additional lease addendums or documents for signature? Um, you can upload them when you're creating the lease, yes. However, um, those specific documents won't be signed. They'll be, just be added to the lease and then they'll be signing the full document. Um, and in the lease, we, we do include that um, all addendums will, um, will be included when they sign. Okay, excellent. Let's see, uh, does our list of banks include community banks? We do include many community banks. However, um, if your renter's bank is not um, appearing, then I would always um, recommend to have them manually added. They can always just manually enter their bank account and routing number. Okay, excellent. So they can use that feature just with their information. Okay. Um, a question came in for, can we collect and keep security deposits and rent on the same bank account? Um, yes, yes. There are some jurisdictions that do require it be in other bank accounts, but for the most part, yes, you can do it in the same account. Um, let me see here. Uh, is there a service for quicker payments? Um, not a service. However, the renters can definitely make a payment using a card. There is a fee of 2.75% if they decide to pay with a card. However, card payments do press, uh, process quicker than ACH payments. Okay, fantastic. And that actually leads us to our next question. Um, ACH payments, are they a charge to the landlord or the tenant at all? No, for ACH payments, that is free. Okay. All right, our next question seems to be around renter's insurance. So how does a tenant set up their renter's insurance so that the landlord is informed if the policy lapses at any time during the tenancy? Um, so on our website at this time, we don't have the option to set it up to notify you. Um, we have the option for you to require renter's insurance. However, there's no way for them to link it at this time. That is a great, um, great recommendation and we'll definitely be sure to forward that feedback. Okay, um, they have a follow-up on there as well is under True Leads email report, there is a column titled reason for moving. Is this an open text field or do applicants have automatically generated responses to choose from? Um, I do believe that's an open field but I can actually get back to you with that. I'm not, I wasn't, um, we can okay. definitely uh, get a better no answer for you here. We will get their information and get that sent to them. Thank you so much. All right, our next one. So does payment through apartments.com report to credit bureaus? No, not at this time. Okay. Um, one of our attendants would like to know what would be the best way to collect rent from tenants who are working but are trying to take advantage of the pandemic into a, order to avoid payment of rent or asking to lower rent? Hmm, I'm not sure if we can really answer that one. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I think that might be specific to their situation. Yeah, that um, might be a little more specific as long as around like strategies and things you wanna do there for it. Um, but, you can um, always you delete payments, however, if you ever need to go in and delete any payments, um, you can do that or remove any late fees. Um, I know that's been used quite often with the pandemic. Yes. Yeah, so like you can still edit the payments and, and various things as well, therefore. Hey, what are you doing? None. Um, the next question we kind of have here is, uh, would you talk about security while using the bank information? So like, could you tell them about what security measures we kind of have in place to protect their personal identifying information? Um, yeah, so right now in order to um, collect rent, you do have to verify your identity. Um, that information is not shared with us. It is um, done with our people. Nobody needs to mute. There we go. We'll take care of that one. All right, I'm sorry, could you repeat that Jocelyn? Uh, yeah, so the, um, the verification, before you can um, collect rent, you do have to do an identity verification. You can do an identity verification uh, via, um, as a company, or you can do it as an individual. Um, and then in terms of um, the, the renter, before they can pay rent, they do have to verify their, their bank account. Um, so there is a verification step before um, renters can pay rent and before you can start collecting rent. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. 
Um, let me ask you here. This is a good one. Um, are old terminated sentence information still kept on file? Yes. So like I mentioned previously, there are filters. So um, once you end a rent collection, whether that's because the lease ended um, or that a tenant no longer lives there, um, it will always, as long as you collect it through apartments.com, you can change your filter to ended and you can see all of your ended um, leases and also all of your ended payments if you were collecting rent. Okay, that's fantastic. So they've got a, a feature where you can pretty much archive and see everything. That's good. Let me see. Uh, if we come down here, how do we view um, the recording of this webinar here in our other previous webinars? Um, I do believe the recording um, will be found. Is that going to be in our help center, Corey? I'm sorry, I wasn't. I'm not I sure do believe it'll be found in our help center. Um, this will all this recording itself will also be emailed out to everyone here, though. So you can find it in the help center, and we will send this out to you guys. Um, we'll also be putting it live on YouTube and our rental manager video page. So that uh, rental manager site is a good one to go to. It will have all of our older um, recordings as well when we're talking about adding properties and adding residents. There we go. Let me see for our next one. It looks like we have a question about, to do, is Zelle a possibility for this portal? Um, not at this time. However, if, um, if you decide to collect rent using apartments.com, that doesn't limit the option for you to collect rent outside of our website. Um, if you were to collect a, a Zelle payment and you wanted to record that so that you can um, show that the renter paid their rent, you can actually go in and just record an offline payment through our website. Mm. Um, I can actually show you if I, let me go ahead and share my screen again here. Um, get that pulled back up here. Here I have some test um, accounts set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, you're gonna go to, this is what your payments um, collection will look like. This is if you have several renters with several properties. Um, you would just go to the renter that you want to record a payment for. You'll see the payment right here, the option right here to record a payment. You can also view the entire ledger. And then right here, you can go ahead and record a, a, a payment. So if you took a Zelle payment, you would just go ahead and put the amount that was paid uh, when you receive the payment. And um, you can just uh, put in the memo what the payment was for. So it would be the uh, renter's pay, um, monthly payment or rent payment. You can include that there. And then whatever memo you put here, the renter can see. So um, they will know that you, that you have uh, recorded their offline payment. Okay, fantastic. Um, we have another kind of follow-up. Um, we have a landlord currently using Cash App to collect rent and they are looking for a more secure platform. Um, do you know like what happens if money is transferred incorrectly from a tenant's account? Um, so when the tenant sets up their um, their rent collect their rent setup or when they set up their rent payments, um, they'll be able to choose the account it comes up it comes out of, um, and then as well as when you're setting up your rent collection, then you'll be able to um, enter the account that the payments are going to be deposited to in the, um, uh, every month. So there isn't really much room for error there. For they just have to go in, schedule their payment, and once the payment is scheduled, then it'll just deposit into whatever bank account you set up. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me see here. Our next ones we have here is, uh, can you have an initial line on any addendums or is there a section in the lease to list any attached addendums? Um, there is in that uh, 16th step when uh, Corey was showing the slides, um, there is an option for you to add any additional stipulations. Okay, and we have one more question here. Does the rent collection platform integrate with QuickBooks? Um, no, not at this time, uh, but you, you can download your payment data if you need to download the, the, the payments. Okay. Oh, it looks like we have one more. Um, can we do tenant screening via apartments.com? And are there any sample reports? If so, how much does it cost? So it's kind of a three-parter. Uh, yes, you could definitely do um, screening. That would be part of actually our um, 
application and screening reports, uh, which is also part of rental tools. I think we covered that in our last webinar, but I can show you where you can find that um, also within the Help Center. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Um, how about we come back to that question until I find the article, but yes, we definitely have them posted within our help center if you wanted to see what those reports look like. All right, fantastic, wonderful. But yes, so we, we you are absolutely able to screen your applicants, guys. Um, that's one of the amazing features we also offer in rental tools as well. Um, it is no cost to the landlord at all. Um, it does come at a cost to the renter. Um, but uh, they pay for you know, the screening process and they get a certain number of screens from that. Uh, next one we have is uh, that we are very similar to cozy.com. Any main differences we should know about for that, Jocelyn? Um, I think the, the main difference is probably just the, um, we are very um, similar, but the main difference is probably um, we have the free online leasing, uh, leases and also um, eviction reports. Okay, fantastic. Um, you had mentioned that uh, rent payment information can be downloaded. What do you mean by that it can be downloaded? Um, it will download into a CSV file. So you would just click download when you're, um, I think I can pull that up as well so I can show you guys. They'll basically download as an Excel and then you can import them into your QuickBooks, but. Okay, that's fantastic. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen just so you can see where that option to download is. And that's gonna be found right here. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, right here you can download um, the data and then it will allow you to choose which property, um, the date range, and then you can download it and import it into your QuickBooks. Okay. Next one we have, um, I see a question about a tenant having a payment transaction come back. I would say you probably wanna reach out to su at support, uh, support at apartments.com. So as to address that uh, individual scenario for, for you. Um, what are the fees to the tenant when signing up here for it, Jocelyn? Uh, so there are no fees. Um, they would just simply set up their rent collection. As mentioned before, the only time they may incur a fee is if they decide to pay with a car. There is a 2.75% processing fee. However, ACH payments are free. Okay, fantastic. Um, does payment through our site automatically provide the tenant with the receipt? Uh, we do send them emails. Uh, when they have made their payment, they'll, uh, they'll receive an email letting them know it's processing. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And I see here, um, what if a tenant does not pay the late fee? Can the landlord keep adding on top of it with our software? Um, and also, if they only pay a partial month's rent, does that carry over to the next month in our system? Yes, if there is a balance, uh, I'm sorry, I missed that first part of the question. If there's a balance, it will carry over. So they'll see the balance um, all the time if they pay a part, if they make a partial payment. Um, the balance will just carry over until it's paid. What was the okay. first part of that question? I'm sorry. The first part was, can they keep adding on top of it? Like if there is, um, let's say if the tenant does not pay the late fee, can the landlord continue to add on top of it? Oh, yes. Um, um, as previously mentioned, you can go in and, um, actually, I don't think I mentioned that, but you can go in and add a bill at any time. You okay. can also... Um, you can also set up uh, late fees if you wanted to charge any late fees. All right, cool. So they can even, like I said, any point you can add in fees for things that come up, that is always good to know. Um, let me see here. Uh, concerning the five-day delay for the landlord deposits, uh, ten, 
of payments may occur over several days. Does a landlord receive a lump sum deposit or does the landlord deposit dribble in? I'm not quite sure what they're asking. Do you understand, Jocelyn? I, uh, I believe they're asking if the full payment will be deposited within okay. um, on that fifth day. Yes, yeah, so you won't receive partial payments through um, leading up to the fifth day. Uh, you'll just receive all of it at once. Okay, wonderful. That is actually our last one. Does anyone in our audience have any more questions at all? Please submit them to the chat. All right, I got, how does apartments.com support this site if the only fees are for credit card use? Um, we do have paying clients, um, like apartment uh, property management companies that usually pay us to advertise. About to say, yeah, there are, there are different levels, but for posting and having individual ownership and rental tools, um, we roll these out. Um, but yeah, we do have several different advertising packages, um, ways to go premium as well with your listings. Um, for more information about that, I would also um, check out uh, the Help Center about premium advertising if you want to have your individual properties go premium. Uh, if you have an applicant misspell their last name, is there any way that the landlord can go in and fix it? So the actual rent collection is actually set up by the landlord. If you misspell their name, you should be able to update that from the residence tab. Yes. Okay, wonderful. And do you have to create the lease on apartments.com or can you upload your own lease to have signed? You can upload your own lease. Yes. Wonderful. Um, we have one about with the advertisement fee for multiple units for one month. I would say uh, reach out. That's more of like an individual thing that they can assess for you. And we can take care of that. If you want to go to support at apartments.com, that's an excellent question for them. And they can walk you through the pricing for different advertisements. Uh, how does a landlord discontinue the service? And if they do discontinue the service, does the landlord have a right to historical information? So you can end the rent collection at any time. Um, once the rent collection is ended, um, it will be available under your ended payments. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, I have one more here. Is there a feature for renters to add comments on their experience with their rental? Um, not at this time, no. Okay, wonderful. All right, um, we're getting a little close to time. So if we have any two or three more questions anybody has, we can address those for you. All right, it looks like that's about it then. Um, I once again, thank you all for joining us um, for this presentation. Uh, I hope you have been able to take away some, some good tidbits or have a better understanding of our product if you are currently using it. Again, thank you so much. I again wanna say there are lots of resources for you. We will be emailing this recorded presentation to you. Please check for the YouTube upload. Um, they have it on our resident management site. And again, if I can give you any piece of advice, if you get a little stuck, jarred around somewhere in there, um, please go to like that resident section for the resident management. You'll be able to find a lot of things right there for, for you, okay? But thank you all again, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.